This video is sponsored by Cool Stuff Inc. If you're looking for cards in the US, look no further as you can use the promo code MTGMUDSTA to get you 5% off anything on the site. Or if you're in Canada like me, you can use the same promo code at Multizone to get 10% off your orders of singles. If cards aren't what you're looking for, Original Magic Art has playmats, tokens, and sweet art that you can use that same promo code to help you get 5% off your order there. If you're looking to bling out your cards, using Alter Sleeves is a great way to do so, and you can click the affiliate link in my About section to help out the channel as you make an order. And if you just want to help out the channel, you can always consider becoming a patron for as little as a dollar a month and join the generic goblin gang. This video is also brought to you by the Kickstarter for Cube Majig Series 2. Cube Majigs are reusable booster packs for Magic the Gathering, Cube, and trading card games. Series 2 upgrades to the previous line, including cleaner seams that prevent packs from bulging, they're pre-made, and they have 30 pieces of gorgeous custom art, made by some of our favorite Magic artists. Be sure to check out the link below for more information. Hey gang, and welcome back. Today's game is another Red Dragon special, with Martin playing his new Chatterfang deck, and keeping a Windswept Heath, Three Forests, Ancient Tomb, Nykthos, Shrine to Nyx, and Phyrexian Arena. Nick is playing Ephemia, keeping Underworld Connections, Never Slash Return, Vampirism, Kaya's Ghost Form, and Three Swamps. Max is playing Orcus, keeping Urborg, Tomb of Yogmoth, a Snow-Covered Swamp, Rakdos Carnarium, Vile Smasher the Fierce, Jessica's Will, Hanweir Garrison, and a Cloudstone Curio. I am playing Orvar, keeping Rogue's Passage, Two Islands, Nykthos, Shrine to Nyx, Dig Through Time, Galecaster Colossus, and a Myriad Landscape. Nick wins the die roll and starts us off. Nick starts off by playing a Swamp and passing to me. I play a Myriad Landscape and ship it to Martin. Martin plays and cracks a Windswept Heath, taking one to go and find an overgrown tomb which he has come in tapped. Max plays a Snow-Covered Swamp. Nick plays a Swamp and casts his commander, Ephemia the Cacophony. I play an Island and pass. Martin plays an Ancient Tomb and taps out taking two to cast his commander, Chatterfang Squirrel General. Max plays a Tap Sulfurous Mire, passing to Nick. Nick plays a Swamp and casts a Morph. He then swings his commander at Martin, dealing two and passing. I play an island, and then crack the landscape to go and find two more islands and pass to Martin. Martin plays a forest and casts Squirrel Nest and enchants it onto his ancient tomb. He moves to combat and swings Chatterfang at Nick, who takes the three. Max plays a mountain and casts File Smasher the Fierce. Nick plays a swamp and casts an Underworld Connections, enchanting it onto a swamp. He then swings Ephemia at Max and passes after she connects. I play Griffin Canyon and then cast Arcane Adaptations, naming wizards as it comes in. Martin plays a Nykthos Shrine to Nyx as his land for turn, and moving to combat, swings the Squirrel General at me, and I take the hit. Max casts a Plague Crafter, and Nick takes three from the Vile Smasher trigger. In response to the Sacrifice trigger, Martin makes a Squirrel token. Nick sacrifices his Morph token, I discard a card, and Martin sacrifices the newly made Squirrel token. Nick untaps and plays a Swamp. He casts Gaia's Ghost Form onto Ephemia, and swings at me for two commander damage. At the end of Nick's turn, he exiles an enchantment from his graveyard and makes a zombie token from Ephemia's trigger. My turn has me drawing and playing an island. I pass to Martin, who casts Worldly Tutor at the end of turn, and Martin goes to find Toski and puts the squirrel on top. Martin untaps and draws Toski. He casts it in his main phase and moves to combat. He swings at Max with Chatterfang, who takes the hit, and upon connecting, Martin draws a card thanks to Toski. With nothing else, he passes to Max. Max untaps and plays a swamp in his main phase. He casts Pawn of Ulamog, who gets a Vile Smasher trigger, and rolls, dealing three to Martin. Max then passes, and Nick uses the Underworld Connections at the end of turn to lose one and draw a card. 
Nick plays a swamp and casts Sign in Blood, targeting himself to lose two and draw two. He follows up by casting Ordeal of Erebos, and then swings a Femi at Martin for three. He then passes to me, and at the end of Nick's turn, I cast Dig Through Time, keeping the best two of my top seven. I play my own copy of Nykthos as my main phase, and cast a Soul Ring. I then tap mana for a Marrow Regery, and then cast my commander, Orvar. Because Orvar is all creature types, I get an untapped trigger from the Regery, and untap my Soul Ring. I then pass to Martin, who taps his Squirrel Nest at the end of turn to make a token. Martin draws, and moves to combat. He swings Chatterfang at Nick, and Toski at me. And we both take the hit, with Martin drawing two. He plays a Swamp in his post-combat main phase, and then casts a Phyrexian Arena, passing to Max. Max plays a land, and casts a Kyleless Blood Mage, who deals three to me with the Bile Smasher trigger. Max then chooses the mode of losing one and drawing one, and then casts a Harenoir Garrison, before passing to Nick. Nick untaps and draws. He plays a Swamp, and then puts to stack Extinguish All Hope, destroying all non-enchantment creatures, which is everything but Ephemia and Toski. With Max's creatures dying, Pawn of Ulamog makes him four Eldrazi spawn tokens. Nick then moves to combat, swinging his commander at max for four, and passes to me. I cast a Gilded Lotus, and then tap to recast Orvar. Once Orvar's on the field, I cast Trait Doctoring, and target the Gilded Lotus, and then cipher the spell onto Orvar. I also get to make a token copy of the Gilded Lotus from Orvar's ability, and with nothing else, I pass to Martin, who at the end of turn, makes a Squirrel token. Martin untaps, and loses one to the arena to draw one, and then draws for turn. He plays a Swamp and moves to combat. He swings both squirrels at Nick, and draws two thanks to Toski. He then casts a Black Market, and passes to Max. Max untaps, and plays an Urborg Tomb of Yawgmoth in his main phase. He casts Croxa, Titan of Death's Hunger, which has each of his opponents discarding a card as it comes in, and he then sacrifices it. Max then casts his commander, Orcus, Prince of Undeath, and puts 4 into the X. He picks the mode of having creatures get minus 4 minus 4, and wipes the board. I respond to this casting Thermal Flux, and targeting a Gilded Lotus to make another token copy of it while Orvar is still out. Martin makes another Squirrel token, and then everything dies, and the Black Market sees 9 creatures dying, with Martin putting 9 counters onto it. With Ephemia dying, Kaya's Ghost Form returns her to the battlefield, and with nothing else, Max passes. At the end of turn, Nick activates the Underworld Connection, losing one to draw a card, and then moves to his turn. Nick plays another Swamp, and casts a Jet Medallion. He casts the Never Half to take out Orcus, and follows up with a Nightmare Lash. He pays three life to equip it to Ephemia, and moves to combat, swinging ten at Martin, who takes the hit in the air. Nick then moves to his end step, and exiles an enchantment with the Ephemia trigger to create another zombie token. I untap and draw. I play a land, and then recast Orvar, passing to Martin. Martin draws one and loses one from his arena, and then draws for turn. He moves to his main phase, and gets nine black mana from the black market. He recasts Chatterfang, and follows up with Kadama's reach to find a land for the field, and one for his hand. He then passes to Max. Max untaps and just plays a Winding Canyon, passing to Nick. Nick plays a Swamp, and pays two mana to cycle Desert of the Glorified to draw a card, and once that's done, moves to combat, swinging at Max with Ephemia for 11. He connects, and then casts Feast on the Fallen. He then passes to me, making another zombie token at the end of turn after exiling an enchantment. I untap, and Nick gets that counter on Ephemia from the Feast of the Fallen. I then cast Master of Pearl Trident, and kick a Rite of Replication, targeting the Merfolk. I then make five token copies of it, which has all of my Merfolks getting plus six plus six in Island Walk, whereas the Lords each get plus five plus five in Island Walk. I then swing Orvar at Nick, who chumps it with the zombie. I then pass to Martin, who at the end of turn, taps the Squirrel Nest, making two Squirrel Tokens. He then pays enough to sacrifice it to the Grim Backwoods that he played earlier, drawing a card. Martin untaps, losing one to the arena, and drawing from it and for turn. 
he casts a Blood Artist and then an Underworld Hermit, which as it comes in, makes Martin 7 Squirrel Tokens. And because of Chatterfang being out, he gets to put out another 7 Squirrels. Martin then casts Feed the Swarm and targets the Arcane Adaptation, losing 3 to destroy it. He then passes to Max, who at the end of turn, flashes in Vindictive Lich with the Winding Canyon. Max untaps and casts a Scourge of the Throne to hide behind and passes to Nick. Nick plays and then activates a Cabal Stronghold, making a bunch of black mana, and uses some of it for a Lash Rithe. He moves to equip Ephemia with it, but in response, Martin activates Chatterfang and sacrifices 12 Squirrel Tokens to take out Ephemia. He has 12 Blood Artist triggers, and he has each opponent lose 4 while he gains 12, and he gets to put even more counters onto the black market. Nick then recasts his commander, and moves to equip again, to which Martin responds to by sacrificing more squirrels to take it out, putting two more counters onto the black market. Nick then recasts Ephemia yet again, and just passes to me this time. I untap, and cast Aristic Study, and move to combat. The way is open at Martin, and I swing my board at him. But before moving to blockers, he casts a Bractogenesis. This gives Martin 6 1 2 spider tokens, which has Chatterfang generating 6 1 1 squirrel tokens off of it as well. Combat damage is also fogged. I then pass, and at the end of turn, Martin makes 2 more squirrel tokens, and tries to take out Orvar by sacrificing 9 squirrels. I stop this by activating Griffin Canyon to pump Orvar, but I do get drained for 9 from the Blood Artist triggers. Martin untaps and loses 1 to the arena, and draws from it, and for turn. He plays a forest and casts Species Specialist, naming squirrels as it comes in. He then uses Squirrel's Nest to make two more squirrels, and sacrifices two squirrels to take out Ephemia and draw Martin two cards. One of those cards is a doubling season, and he sacrifices the Hermit to the Grim Backwoods, drawing a card. Martin then casts Increasing Ambition and tutors for a card, and then flashes it back to find two more. He finds and casts Conspiracy, naming squirrels as it comes in, and casts a Zulpur Cutthroat, and then a Deep Forest Hermit. The Hermit makes four squirrels, which when stacked with Doubling Season, becomes eight squirrels. Then, Chatterfang would make eight more squirrels, which becomes sixteen squirrels, and this gives Martin a massive board of squirrels to drain all of his opponents out. Game review time. So I don't know if you noticed, but the card that I discarded to Kraxa was Rogue's Passage, and by the end of the game, I deeply regretted it. Had I played it, I had so much mana, and I could have used it to give Nick's commander unblockable, which might have prompted him to attack Martin as opposed to Max. I then could have used it on my turn to give Orvar or something else that was large a way in. It's hard to say how that would have gone though, because Martin did have that arachnogenesis in his hand, and he certainly had enough squirrels to basically kill what was ever unblockable. I'm not entirely sure whether or not I would have board wiped if I was in Max's position with Orcus, since it cost him 4 life and it really powered up Martin's black market. I know that Toski was a troublesome card since Martin was definitely drawing a bunch from it, but Max could have probably done it for just one and only given Martin a few counters as opposed to the nine on the market. I think Nick attacked Max with Ephemia that last turn because he assumed that I was going to take out Martin during my turn with those Master of the Waves and Orvar. It made sense to me anyway because if he had attacked Martin to take him out, he would have been defenseless and I most likely would have swung into him to take him out as well. By forcing me to attack Martin and taking him out, it would have given Nick another turn to survive and maybe find a board wipe. This video wouldn't be possible without the help from my sponsors, Cool Stuff Inc., Multizone, Original Magic Art, and Alter Sleeves. But it definitely wouldn't be possible without the help from you, the viewers, and my patrons. So I just want to say thank you for watching, and to remember, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.